Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. So I'm back here underneath the big hole, inside the big hole, underneath the mushroom base. And I dug out a couple more chunks, or started to dig out a couple more chunks. And I tell you, after all the painfully slow process of taking out all of those blocks in the uh, slime area underneath the winter chalet, uh, this feels just downright luxurious having a beacon, even going through deep slate. So... Um, all my whining about how slow Deep Slate was, even with the Haste 2 Beacon and Efficiency 5 pick, um, I take it back. And then I was here and I saw, um, you know, I need more glowstone to light up the platforms. Then I realized when I came over here, I saw the giant fungus that I was, the little area that I was growing. I'm like, oh wait, that would be a good thing to do down here. But I don't have that much of the warped nylon. But then I realized, oh, look, if you bone meal netherrack that's next to warped nylon, it turns into warped nylon. Now, I only have the blue stuff, the turquoise stuff. I don't have the, uh, the crimson stuff. I need to go find some. I don't know that I've seen any. I've seen a crimson forest. So I need to go spend some time in the nether, which is so much easier now that I have a elytra. Um, it's easier to navigate. It's still dangerous, but it's easier to navigate. Um, so yeah, so I've got plenty of bone meal, bones. And you can bone meal this stuff and get all kinds of fungus and Occasionally you'll get, let's see if we get some, get these twisting vines. Let's see here. So what I did is I, I laid in all this uh, nether rack. And I put just a little half slab up there to get up onto it because I dug all the way down to the that bedrock layer. Which makes it kind of difficult to embed things into the floor. Got all that bedrock. So, go ahead and do this. Turn this all into warp nylon. I have plenty of um, nether rack from just digging out the nether hub. Uh, plenty of bone meal from the skeleton farm the XP farm and I can make all these plants which aren't super useful it's interesting that the crimson fungus will spawn when bone mealed occasionally but I can't bone meal it into giant fungus it needs to be on its the crimson um, needs to be on the crimson nylium, which I don't have. There we go. Now I'm out of bone meal. I have some more. <laughs> Pretty sure I have some more. Uh, yeah, I put some in here. I, think I have extra in here. Yeah, look at this. I have a whole stack of bone blocks, and then I brought some extra. Put this away and I don't think I need that now I can just take some of those and then I can find myself some of these fungus in a convenient spot and just go whoa bow and look shroom lights and because I have enough space here I can make several of these and get more than one shroom light bearing fungus at a time. Some of these get quite tall. Uh, let me go grab one of these. This 
swap it for this one. I don't know what's the optimal spacing here, but look at that. Neat. Now these things aren't terribly, um, uh, they aren't the most prolific things in the world. So you get one, two, three, four, whatever shroom lights per these per fungus. But at least you get some. And they're neat blocks. So I might, if I can get enough of them, swap to these from the glowstone on at the uh, at the slime farm. Now I've got several platforms in and it takes 12 per, so I need I need multiple stacks of whatever lighting block it is. And then I can probably experiment a little bit. I might not need put him in the corner and two in the center blocks. Because the chunks are the platforms are single chunk size, so they're even they're built on evens. 16 by 16, so I have I have uh, lights in the corners, and then the two center blocks. Maybe I don't need all those lights. Just need to keep the platform below lit up above zero, so that mobs don't spawn on them, regular mobs, and then the slimes can spawn on them. And I found this is this is a little tedious, but this is the best way. Oh, hello. I have, a, I have an amazing Larry on my lap. Um, this gives them a haircut all up to that level. This guy may not have any shroom lights at all. Uh, and I do kind of wish that the... that this the wart block were a little bit more useful. It's a... It's a does seem to be a purely decorative block. Um, oh, let me do this. Although it is nice to have a reason to use a hoe other than farming, you know, crops. Okay, so. What I've been doing is going up here, blop, 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 and then, oh, there's a shroom light right there. Then reaching down as far as I can, and then chopping down the wood. The wood is interesting because you can make a lot of wood type things out of it, but not everything. It doesn't, in, whoops, it doesn't entirely behave like wood. But it is essentially wood. If that makes any sense. Um, you can do this sort of four sided, four sided log texture that has a weird name. That I don't understand why it's named that, but that's what it's named. Um, you could do some, some things with it. Uh, I wish they would just treat it wholly like wood. That you could make charcoal and you could smelt it and you could do all that stuff. But it doesn't. That's fine. Um, and notice, if you don't get to... Uh, if you don't chop off the bottom log soon enough, it reverts the nylium to netherrack, which outside was a big pain in the butt because I was afraid of losing all the nylium, but I can make more nylium. All I have to do is throw a little more bone meal right there. Ah, and it's back. And I did not realize that. So... So we need to do a couple more scaffolds here. And 
then continue. So that's a little bit of a pain. Somebody's probably built a machine to do this, and I need to look them up. See if there is a uh, frog or a shroom light. Um, shroom, automatic shroom light farm. And you could take, because this, this wart block isn't all that useful. Because it doesn't behave like... Oops. Um, it doesn't behave like another wart block. So you can't go... You can't make another wart out of it. Which would be nice. Um, and you can't craft anything out of it. And it is it does appear to be purely decorative. And it's, you know, it's a turquoise color, so it, it has its place. It's useful, I'm sure. But um, how often are you going to need that color turquoise? So uh, if they don't do something, that they don't make it so you can smelt it into something or um, make it an alternative for something... Uh, it would be nice if, well, you can compost it. So if I build a farm that generates this stuff, I guess you can take all these cast offs and throw them into a smelter and get bone meal to keep driving the farm because you can you can bone meal the nylium from a dispenser. You just need to keep it fed with bone meal. Probably in that scenario would want to worry about getting to those fast enough to avoid ruining the nylium. I don't know if a shifting floor type thing would work. And some of these can get really tall, so. See how many shroom lights I got out of that. Fourteen. So that's another layer of the slime uh, slime platform. It's not super great, but better than nothing. I've been at this for a little bit. I kind of reset things a little bit too, just for show. So I have. Almost a stack and a half of shroom lights. Oh, and these twisting vines are really neat. Um, you can, let me put these things up away. So yeah, you get these crimson fungus, but they're kind of useless without the crimson. Um, oops, that was, uh, without the crimson nylium. And I'm going to be a wash in this stuff, and you can't do much with it other than compost it or build. So, these, the twisting vines. Oops. Twisting vines. You can plant them here, and they will grow up. In the crimson forest, the vines from the crimson giant fungi grow down. Uh, so, they're, so they're backwards. And if you bone meal these, they kind of go up. Um, if you have, if you break, if you break them, I oh, like this one already grew. They grow slowly, but they grow. Um, so if you break them a block at a time, you get at least one uh, vine out of it. These things can grow really tall. Ah, oh, stop it. If I break this, if I were to climb up and start breaking it from the top down, you get one per. But as it is, if you break, the one you break, you're guaranteed to get one. And then for the ones above it, there's like a small chance that you'll get one for each of those. So it's not super great to do it like this. Oops. 
But the cool thing about these is you can climb them. So I could in theory climb up and break them as I go down, right? Can I stand on top of this? I don't know. Let's find out. Ooh, this one went big. And they will rest fall damage. So that should give me a bunch. Yeah, that, see that gave me half a stack right there. And this guy, same sort of thing. Um, there we go. See, now I've got 45 twisting vines in my pocket. Cool, so they will just kind of slowly grow over time. You can harvest some. And I'm thinking a simple like repeater piston type deal should help harvest them in an automated fashion. So I'll have to play around with that too. So this is going to be like my little... Let's uh, have fun with this uh, nether fungi stuff. And if I figure out a... Um, figure out a, a more automated way of harvesting all this stuff, I will probably do that. And again, doing... Taking all the uh, remains of everything and uh, dumping it into a composter should probably generate enough, bo ooh, generate enough bone meal to drive it. Uh, we'll find out. Oops. No. Bone meal, don't hit. There we go. So anyway, there's that. What I've been working on here. Lots of stuff. Lots of fun stuff. Um, what do I have? In my pockets. I can dump this and the vines. So yeah, I'll also stack these twisting vines now. And more of those. Oops. That can go here. And I have, you know, a fair amount of warp nylon. So this is the interestingly, the wiki says the warp nylon is non-renewable. But I'm not quite sure what they meant by renewable there because obviously I can create more. Um, all I need is is netherrack. I think they say netherrack is now renewable too, which sure, technically, I guess it would not be renewable, but it's um it's so abundant that you're always gonna have some thing huh. do I have excess space here and a chest that is predominantly smooth deep slate maybe polished deep slate ah there we are that's right, I got a bunch of obsidian too. Um, that was because I ran into a lava pool and I obsidianized the whole freaking thing. So these I want to take somewhere. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to take these. Uh, and I need to build more ender chests. And that'll help with that. So... And I can get back to digging out stuff. So I think I said this wall here. I can't go too much farther than this. Because we're very soon we run into the end of the island. And we run out of uh, uh, mushroom fields or mushroom fields biome. And then we get into a place where things can spawn. Um, so... <clears throat> But I can go quite a ways that way, and I can go this way and that way. Uh, so I think I'm going to... I can go another chunk maybe that way before I run out of range of the spawner chunk, or two maybe. And then I'll start digging out to the sides before I move the the, uh, the beacon, not the spawner. Uh, and I should just go get more spawn, uh, more beacons. But 
Anyway, that's roughly what I've been up to. Uh, no real change on anything else. Um, I'm still testing positive for COVID. I'm feeling fine. Um, Chihuahua Power G is still on the ship. She's still testing positive. She may stay on the ship past the return to Vancouver and get off the ship at some point in Alaska when she does test negative. That's a cruise line seems amenable to that, and that may just be the easiest to do. So, anyway, I think that's it. Thank you for watching. It's been Theron, it's been Minecraft Line Party, and I'll see you next time.